Hello my peeps, this is Ket aka Kakibot and I hope you are ready to be offended by other people's opinions because today I am just the medium that brings you those opinions because last week on Instagram I asked a whole bunch of you, the whole 4,000 of you, to share some hot stakes aka unpopular opinions on Scotland or Edinburgh with me on there so I can share them here. I did warn people that I would share them here but I'm gonna share them anonymously because I don't want any any aggression towards anyone if you don't agree with people so yeah I'm just gonna <laughs> my my hot take on this whole topic is that a lot of you don't know what a hot take is I should have probably specified that a hot take is an unpopular opinion because when I asked on Instagram some people started sending in answers along the lines of Edinburgh is the best that is not a hot take everyone thinks that except for everyone who lives here. Um, <laughs> more on that later. Okay, so there's gonna be two parts of this video. First one is the hot steaks. Sippy sip. And the other one is gonna be the overrated parts of Scotland slash Edinburgh that people are kind of obsessed with visiting or photographing, but are not really that worth it, at least according to you or other people who follow me on Instagram. And now you can tell them what you think in the comment section below, okay. Let's get on it. Okay, so the first one, the first hot take, uh, and I actually really like this one, is it's not actually cozy in Scotland unless you find a moldy flat at 13 degrees in the middle of winter cozy. This is such a good one because I think that Scotland and also a lot of Scandinavian countries kind of like marketing wise lean into this idea that um, because it's it's cold and you get to be like snuggled up and you get to drink all these hot beverages for like 10 months of the year that that's pleasant but um, I think there's something to be said about being forced into that kind of coziness I think that like when you're sitting at home trying to work and you you are like considering should I be wearing gloves right now um, I don't think that's great. Uh, the flats in Edinburgh, and I'm guessing all over Scotland, the insulation is not the best. Uh, so yeah, you will basically be forced into this over the top coziness. And I think that if you're here for like a week or a month, you might still find that endearing. But if you're here for 10 years, <laughs> it kind of gets old over the years. The next one is, Edinburgh is built with visitors in mind first, and this has a massive negative impact on people who live here. I cannot argue with that, although I would say that Edinburgh specifically has... <laughs> this is my hot take. I don't think there's really that much else going on apart from tourism and government. Um, I think a lot of jobs and a lot of kind of like big media and banking, I feel like that's mostly centered in Glasgow and often just like in England, in north of England, like those sort of HQs will be covering Scotland as well. So yeah, I, I just feel like if we tried to like take that like massive amount of like tourism and the focus on tourism down, I think a lot of people would lose their income. One thing I will say is that um, I think what needs to happen more often is some sort of like support for locals who are not on the traveling budget so they can enjoy the same things as the visitors do on the you know much better allowance. Um, I think that there are some kind of little sort of twinkles of that going on like you know during the fringe you get um, some like discounts for the specific sort of um, EH postcodes. I believe that now the, um, the historical Scotland is starting some sort of scheme where kind of between October and March uh, if you have a local postcode you get like one day a month when you can visit the castles and palaces and such for free so I, I love seeing that but um, I think there needs to be more of it. August should be avoided altogether unless you are traveling specifically for fringe. I think that is a very good opinion, a very good piece of advice. Um, I tell this to people all the time. Um, okay so personally I have this whole like Encyclopedia Britannica sized list of mental health issues which means that during the fringe when I want to do something that's not the fringe but also sometimes things that are the fringe I just like leave the house and I walk through the city center and I just get so overwhelmed that I cannot enjoy any of that and uh, 
for me that sucks and maybe it sucks for a lot of other people too let me know um yeah so i think that you will like give yourself a much better opportunity to enjoy the city if you're not coming for the festival specifically, if if you plan your trip for any of the other months, um, I would really recommend September or May, which are kind of, it's kind of the shoulder season. You kind of lose out on the benefit of like the sort of seemingly endless amount of daytime, uh, because like right now this is mid-September and you can really see how the days are getting shorter, like quite dramatically, like it happened so early. Um, I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. I've lived here for 12 years now. I should know that this is what happens in September, but you just, it's so noticeable. However, you know, it comes with a certain coziness, which you have to be prepared for <laughs> as per the first hot take. Um, and you know, if you, if you like wearing coats and, and jumpers and scarves, then perhaps September is always going to be better than the summer. Here I have two opinions, which are kind of, they to me feel almost like opposite opinions on the same thing. First one being healthcare might be free but it's almost not worth all the hoops one has to jump through and the other one is the social care system here might have its flaws but it's the best one i've experienced this is from a recent canadian immigrant um and canada i believe does have free healthcare system as well here i wonder about the wording because this person says social care but i kind of feel like here the healthcare kind of falls into that because it's that whole like you know scotland is very sort of socially focused. Yeah, it, it's hard to comment on it because as you can see, even from the opinions that were coming in, uh, in my poll, people don't quite agree. I think, um, especially for people who are moving in from abroad, um, they now have to pay quite a lot to access NHS. And I cannot imagine just how frustrating it would be to have to pay for the NHS and then have to go through that whole rigmarole of like trying to get a GP to just call you, not even see you in person, just call you and you just spend like four days on the phone trying to get through the receptionist. On one hand, it is reassuring to live in a country where you know that if like really it comes like to the worst scenario, they will take care of you fingers crossed I don't know uh, <laughs> it hasn't come to that yet but that's kind of my belief but unfortunately I think that especially for people who move from a different country and my guess is especially for people who come from Europe where um, a lot of the European attitude in this is kind of like well let's fix it before it gets bad here you don't get that um, and that gets frustrating because like if, if you grew up being told um, just go to the doctor like as soon as possible like if something feels off just like fix it now not later here it's kind of like eh you know can you walk like can you go to work uh and if not then maybe like we'll see you in two months oh i'm really spiraling here i really shouldn't be <laughs> i think i have some other videos about this on the channel but um yeah it's quite interesting to see how people have uh different opinions on this like some people still really appreciate how things are set up here and of course in scotland things are set up uh, a bit more kind of social friendly than down in england because um you know we technically have access to like free menstrual products we do have uh, access to free medication because down in england you do have to pay for some of that and over here you don't and like that's great it's just that sometimes what you see on the paper doesn't quite translate into what happens in real life okay um here uh two opinions that kind of like to me melt into the same hot take uh edinburgh is too expensive for the average salaries in the city and quality of life is very debatable the same salary would give people a luxury lifestyle elsewhere yep <laughs> it is and i feel like people especially when they're considering moving here they do not realize just what a like a luxury postcode this is and this kind of goes back to the whole like edinburgh is for visitors first and local second mm, it, i would say that like the last part of that horrible triangle is uh, short-term lets because that then leads to the whole issue we have with housing right now. Um, yeah, but living in Edinburgh is expensive and it's only getting more expensive and uh, the paychecks here are not really that lavish. Um, there are not really that many 
options here to kind of get into an industry that pays really well. I think a lot of my friends who do have jobs that pay relatively well usually um, have to work remotely for like a like a tech company some sort of startup somewhere else like in Europe in the States down in London here like if you wanted to find a job in Edinburgh where like you have an office and you go there and you do your job there the chances of you actually having like a nice income are extremely low so um, yeah Keep that in mind. We're kind of following up with something that's connected to it, which is um, the housing crisis is wild and much worse than expected. When we were moving here, every available flat is an Airbnb. Yes, <laughs> it's horrible. I think that especially in the summer, so like if this person was sending this hot steak in just kind of coming off the summer period, in summer, like whoever can rent out their flat to fringe visitors or performers usually will do it because there's just so much money in it. Um, however, there's quite a lot of lot of kind of debate going on about this right now here in Edinburgh. Um, <laughs> the, the landlords are kind of, you know, coming in with their pitchforks, they're coming to, to the parliament. Uh, you know, the Scottish, the Scottish government is trying to regulate things. They've already tried once. The landlords basically went to like the court. The court said, okay, this was unlawful. So now the government is trying to find a different way about it. The landlords are angry again. Uh, there's, I don't know. Um, I understand that uh, like, it's it's business and uh, I understand that like landlords who don't own their whole property who you know have a mortgage and like the mortgages right now it's also really wild I do understand they have to bump up those rents but um, I think that in uh, a society which I think Scotland wants to be you do have to think of the like the lowest earners first and then you can start thinking about landlords i'm really curious how this is going to turn out um so it's it's in process and i wonder if next year <laughs> this whole regulation is like gonna destroy fringe maybe maybe we'll get the rents down at least yeah like the, we See, but that's that's the thing right like what do you want first do you want theater or do you want a place to sleep Ooh, so this one is more like physical. This one says, Edinburgh is very inaccessible, stairs and hills everywhere. Very hard to explore for someone with mobility issues or pregnant. Um, yeah, uh, <laughs> if you watched my video on visiting Edinburgh Castle for the first time ever, um, you probably remember that I was quite grumpy. Uh, one of the reasons for that was that I was just sort of finishing with my first sort of run of COVID. Um, I wasn't really like 100% physically and like hauling my butt all the way up to the castle. And then at the castle, there's also like a whole bunch of stairs and it was it was cold and it was, it was kind of wet and the cobblestones, they get slimy in winter. Like then they're like iced over, that's even worse. I, yeah, like Edinburgh is a place that, uh, you know, the upside is when you live here, when you walk around it's gonna keep you fit but if you're visiting and you know you might have some sort of like needs for like mobility support or you know you're not quite 100 percent on on that front edinburgh is not gonna be your friend um i think that like new town the sort of newer newer part of the city center that one i think is quite friendly towards this um it has, you know, some some wider sidewalks. I think Newtown is pretty okay to explore, even with uh, some needs along those lines. But uh, Old Town is horrible. Like, there's not honestly, like some of the sidewalks are literally like like this wide. And I know that they're not gonna fix that. Like, they they can't really fix that. But I think that the best I can do is to warn you that that's the case. Um, and uh, yeah, get get yourself like an Uber app. Uh, a cab app and uh, try to rely on that of course you know the buses and the trams are are good but i would again say that the buses and trams are kind of um mostly servicing all of the areas but old town perhaps partially because old town is just so kind of claustrophobic and hilly and it's 
quite hard to get those like big buses through there and obviously the tram just doesn't go there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, Instagram is filled with the same photos of Edinburgh over and over again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play devil's advocate for a bit because I do know how, how Instagram works and unfortunately sometimes you just have to post like the obvious thing that people want. Um, I think that a lot of, lot of my f friends who are also sort of social media creators are trying to walk that line between like publishing content that's like a bit different, something that they actually want to post, but they often see that that doesn't really uh, do all that well when it comes to the gods of algorithm. So then they start taking all these pictures that objectively are easier to take because like you don't have to walk around trying to figure out what looks pretty. Someone else has already figured it out. So you just kind of like scroll through the Edinburgh tag on, on Instagram. You find the like five angles that everyone does and then you go do them yourself. You post it on Instagram and you know, th there you go. Voila, you have um, 500 likes on that picture. And uh, then that gets you on that sort of like wheel of motivation to not really do anything original. And uh, that's sad. I think that like in, in long run, uh, doing something that's um, a bit more unique can also kind of pay off, but I think that when you want to see some results fast, then that's what you have to do. Um, however, it's kind of nice to see that like people on the other side of that uh, also do want to see some, some new angles, some original imagery. So yeah, um, personally, I'm gonna try my best. Uh, and by trying my best, I mostly mean I'm gonna try and post more often than like once a month on my Instagram. But um, trust me, I'm trying to put all of my energy and effort into this channel because this is, I, I know you guys, you guys love it here. So this is, this is our home. This is what we take care of. And then sometimes, you know, as, as a bonus, you can go to my Instagram, which by the way, is either Kakibot for illustrations, which right now very dead, but um, I'm working on it. And Kaki blog, which is the photos and kind of life in Edinburgh and a lot of nice unexpected angles most of the time. Yeah, this is an oldie but goldie. Everything closing between four to five is a struggle. Hard to find a cup of coffee outside of chain coffee shops after that time. Yeah, there is a real issue with that and kind of like general um, public spaces. Um, I would say that you probably know if you follow me that um, one thing that I like uh, to take advantage of is like hotel lobbies, like a lot of hotel lobbies have that sort of like coffee shop slash bar vibe and you can just walk in there and sit there. It is it is technically a public space. Like you don't have to stay at a hotel just to sit in their lobby. Like if you buy a coffee or a drink, like nobody's gonna kick you out. It's less loud, usually also a lot uh, more kind of open spacey than being in a pub. Um, and yeah, it often becomes the only option apart from um, chain coffee shops. You know, I'm, I'm neutral about chain coffee shops specifically, like this is one of the big reasons for it. One of them is that um, small coffee shops here in Edinburgh are quite, well, small. <laughs> And you do feel bad, like if you want to work, you bring your laptop there. A lot of them actually do have rules against that. But you know, if they don't and you come there and you sit there for two hours drinking your one flat white, it doesn't feel right. Uh, in like a Starbucks or Black Sheep, you feel like you can get away with that. Because I mean, those those people working there, they, they don't mind. Like it's it's not really their business. Um, so yeah, like I'm, I'm just gonna be transparent about this. Like often I do go to a chain cafe because uh, it will be open often until like eight or nine. And I, you know, I can come there at five, start working and stay until later in the day. You know, often if, if, it's, if it's cold outside, oh my God, winter is coming. I just realized that it's gonna be really cold again. Um, yeah, and like museums and galleries, they also tend to close about like four and 5 p.m. So those are really not an option either. Um, so yeah, when it comes to places where you can like stay warm and safe and charge your phone and maybe do some work, um, unfortunately, the chains are often the only option um, because I do not want to work from a pub. Um, it's just, does anyone? Um, let, let me know in the comments below. Do you like working from a pub? Which one is your favorite worky pub? 
bagpipes at every corner get tiring very fast. It's a nice one-time novelty, but in the context of everyday life, it gets super annoying. This one is for Simon, because he gets annoyed by bagpipes. Simon, what's your take? I don't mind them so much as I mind the screeching coming out of the Scotland tourist shops. Uh, yeah, it's always like Kings of Leon, but if they were bagpipes. <laughs> Someone just straight up said, the food is a disgrace. What? Uh, then followed up by, oh my God, why, why is everything deep fried? Because it's cold and deep frying is comforting unless you're the person being deep fried. Um, and also, well, this one I can't really fight with. I think this person has a point, uh, especially coming from Europe. Uh, the food quality in supermarkets is worse than in the EU. UK's organic quality food is the same as France's regular produce. I don't, I don't know. I think, I think if you come from France or Italy, or I don't know, Spain, if you come from like green and plentiful Europe, the olive oil Europe, then I imagine that coming to Scotland is a bummer, but I come from potato Europe. So for me, I think the transition was a lot easier. Um, I don't know, it's just, I think that it's, it's, in, in, it's important to kind of think about what the country just like geographically can actually grow, like in Edinburgh, uh, in, in Scotland, you know, you have you have beef and um, you have sheep, and those are all beautiful in delicious stews. And of course, haggis. I like haggis. You get potatoes, you get turnips, you get all sorts of uh, like root veg. Again, I really like them. They are more wintry. Like in the summer, you might not be into them, but I don't know. Not, nothing's wrong with a nice carrot. Uh, oats all over the place. I think a good porridge is like the part of Scottish cuisine that we should focus on more. It's such an iconic, like a fitness Instagrammer meal. And we also grow so many berries here. Seafood, you have the mussels, you know, very sustainable, very good for you, especially if you're low on iron, like me, Simon the Vampire. Scottish salmon, delightful. So I think that there's a lot uh, that's like specifically Scottish that's very good. Um, but again, uh, Edinburgh and Scotland, not as cheap as one might hope. So all of these tasty things uh, can get really pricey, you know, especially seafood. Um, however, oatmeal uh, is always cheap and I eat it every day. Join me, join me on my oatmeal crusade. Um, regarding the fried thing, um, I think that that's something that got a lot better in uh, in the current years. I think that when I first moved here, uh, Scottish people would genuinely kind of warn me, like, don't expect anything green, everything's going to be deep fried, that's, that's how we like it. <laughs> and I think that, especially when you live in Edinburgh and there's just so much access to, like, sort of world cuisine and, you know, people here, I think, are genuinely interested in cooking uh, new things and trying new things. I think that the sort of deep friedness of it all is not really that much of a problem. Although, like, yesterday I was on a tour and the tour guide was kind of recommending... She... She genuinely... She is Scottish. She's from Aberdeen. She recommended the whole tour bus to go have a deep fried Mars bar, which I was like double shocked by because first people will always say like, ah, oh, deep fried Mars bar, that's not Scottish cuisine. Well, I mean, clearly if like Scottish people will tell you to go have it, then she said that she has it from time to time, like as a treat, then I, I think that um, qualifies it as, as Scottish cuisine then. And um, I was also just, uh, even if it is Scottish cuisine, I was genuinely quite baffled by how proud she was of it. <laughs> no, it's you know I I'm always against any sort of like food shaming. I don't like that. So uh, I was just surprised is what I'm gonna say. So for this part of the video, my lovely husband has joined in because I know you all love him, but I love him more. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I needed to goblin for a little bit. You do that. And I'm gonna quick fire some overrated uh, tourist destinations at you and you can tell me what you think and if you agree. Okay. Okay, so this one might, uh, this will be hard for you from, from the get-go. Oink is overrated. A little, yeah. Aw, is it? <laughs> you love it, but... Well, like, we haven't been in ages. I, you know, here, here's the thing, like, there's nothing wrong with a, a hog roast, but like, walking past that window and seeing a, the carcass of a pig every time we walk up the Royal Mile is a bit gross. It's not overrated necessarily, I suppose, but it's just kind of... 
It's a bit mid. <laughs> I disagree. I think it's nice. And if you don't want to know where your meat came from, then you shouldn't be eating meat. I just meat. don't want to see its face. That's all. It's not too much to ask. You just want to live a lie. Yes. The obvious one, which uh, you know that I'm kind of in this camp, Edinburgh Castle is overrated. Yes, it's completely overrated. There's much better castles. Edinburgh Castle is really expensive. Um, you can get the best view of it from the gardens, or if you want to walk up to the, gr the marching grounds outside and take a picture from there, you can, but I wouldn't bother going to explore inside. I think that if you have like the historic Scotland membership, uh, then it might be nice to kind of like go in and out, maybe like, you know, a couple times a year. If you live here and you have the membership and mm -hmm. you can go in there for free, I think then it becomes a nice place to enjoy because one thing it has going for it is that there are certain views you can't really get from anywhere else unless you're maybe like having some sort of very posh hotel room like mm. in West End or something. Yeah, I, th I think that if you're coming to Edinburgh for like, let's say two days, I really don't think that it's necessary to spend like one quarter of your whole time here by visiting the castle. No. Okay. Um, Portobello Beach is not pleasant at all. Apparently the only good beaches are in East Lothian. So Yellow Craigs and some of the other beaches outside uh, in East Lothian are wonderful. They're definitely better than Portobello for being isolated and for the weather generally being a bit better. But Portobello's got its own charm and some of the places on there on the promenade to eat are quite nice. And, you know, you can people watch and it's got a nice long walk on it. So that's kind of kind of cool. And you're right next to Portobello Main Street, which has got some nice things to do in yeah. as well. So it's a, it's a city beach, I think. Yeah, it, that makes it like a specific category of a beach. I think to go to East Lothian, well, I mean, you, it's connected pretty well to Edinburgh, but uh, it's still, you know, it's, it's a bit of a schlep. Ideally, we'll be driving and that already makes it inaccessible to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like you can go to North Berwick, like North Berwick is really fun to visit. There's a lot there to see and a lot there to enjoy. And the beach there is quite nice. But I think that having a beach that's actually connected like to your house in a city, by, I don't know, a, a 15 to 30 minute bus ride is pretty special. Like I grew up in a landlocked country, so I don't like anyone <laughs> pooping on the only beach I have now. And I don't know if it's still true, but the last time we went there, the St. Andrew's fish and chip shop on Portobello High Street is, was great. And mm. having that sitting on the actual waterfront is, is lovely. Just to make sure you go there when it's not too windy or too cold, because that's a real bummer. I know, it is colder there than it is in the city centre. So you really like, if you want to have like a nice beach experience, you will ideally save the porty visit for like a heat wave. Um, but I don't know, I just know so many people who like going there even when it's cold, just for, again, there are often people who are from Czech Republic, so like they just don't have the luxury of any seaside at all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> this has been a long shoot. <laughs> I have become a little brook. Mm. Okay, uh, <laughs> this one is kind of timely for me right now because it's Outlander locations are not worth a visit. Look, just go on a Highland tour. You'll see nice things. Like there's lots of lots of wonderful parts to Scotland that you can see. If you just want to see bits that are in your weird favourites, medieval romance thing, then you know that's entirely your choice. But like, nah, there's better things out there. Okay, counter argument. <laughs> I think, I, funnily enough, I was on an Outlander tour just yesterday. I was paid to go there because I haven't watched Outlander. We're gonna make a video about that down the line, I think. Like me watching Outlander for the first time ever, it's gonna get steamy, I think. <laughs> That's how I understand Outlander. Everyone on that tour was very horny. Uh, <laughs> Um, it's like, oh, this is where Jamie did that thing, sexily. Uh, but I went on the tour and I would say that like half of it is kind of like smaller Scottish castles, which I don't necessarily think are worth a visit unless you're like super into castles. But then the other half are those like beautiful five villages where I think a lot of people would never go there without that sort of outlander connection. Uh, um, Kuros, 
and um, Falkland. They are both so beautiful. They're like small but extremely photogenic. You get to kind of explore a little bit and uh, yeah, they're like these beautiful places where there's like not a single modern structure to be found. One of them is close to the Firth of Forth, the other one is just kind of like sitting under this nice little sort of volcanic hill. Um, I love them both, so I think that even outside of the Outlander uh, context, those two places I would really recommend you visit, especially if you have a car and you can go there easily. But like, if not, then hop on on one of those Outlander tours and they will take you there. Although I think that then you don't really have enough time to explore fully. I didn't yesterday, so um, yeah, that is my tip. I, I don't think that they're overrated. Um, <laughs> Outlander might be. <laughs> Coming in with those hot takes, I haven't mm. seen it yet. I'm gonna give you hot takes later when I when I finally do. Ooh, the milkman on Coburn Street is overrated. That's Hoisy coffee shop. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong about it. It's just that people just. <sighs> There's two of them now, but uh, neither of them really has almost any seating space. That's kind of that's just a coffee shop bugbear of mine. So it's. I think kind of seeing it as a coffee shop that's essentially just a takeaway coffee shop. I don't think that it deserves as much love as it's getting. You know, the architecture is beautiful, but that's not really something they made happen. That's just Coburn Street being perfect. Anyway, it, it's it's a good coffee shop, but uh, we do have other coffee shops also. Loch Ness is overrated. Disagree. Loch Ness is great. <laughs> Loch Ness is beautiful. Then again, we've got lucky with the weather when, we, when, when we've gone there. Like if you go there and it's piddling with rain, that's what? Kind of suck. We were we went twice, and one time it was piddly. What? Yeah, when we were shooting our uh, oh, then it was, Halloween then special. Then it was atmospheric and it was interesting. And yeah, no, as long as it's not disgusting, mm. you're going to have a really nice time around there. The the you know the the scenery is beautiful. Um, I think yeah, I, I wonder how often people actually kind of stay overnight, like on somewhere on on the edge mm. because I think that was really nice for us. Yeah. If, if you want to see a little bit of what that was like, watch uh, our last NC500 video because we did stay overnight around one of the ends of Loch Ness and it was beautiful and I mean the weather was nice but kind of seeing the sunset and rise over there and kind of seeing people enjoy the sort of Loch side. Um, I think that if you're just driving around then quite a lot of the drive is covered in trees so you don't really get to see all that much of the lake. It's a beautiful drive though. Like, as a driver, it's one of the bits yeah. of Scotland that is actually really nice to, to, to have a go on. Well then, a driver tip. I'm going to end this with my own uh, bit to add to this list, mm -hmm. which is, I think that uh, Dean Village is overrated. Yeah, Dean Village is overrated. It's nice uh, for a postcard view, but when you actually start walking around, it's, it's a bit bland. I, I am always so surprised. It's kind of... <laughs> D Dean Village is the deep fried Mars bar <laughs> of Edinburgh. Like locals will tell you to go there and visitors generally, they when you ask them what their plan is, uh, they will tell you like, oh, tomorrow I'm going to Dean Village. And I, al I always get that like sense of like, they don't realize that this is like a 10 minute thing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I would say that Dean Village is basically a detour when you're going to Stockbridge. Yeah, absolutely. It's perfect for that. Or if you do maybe like the, the Water of Leith walkway thing, mm -hmm. um, because that also kind of takes you to Stockbridge eventually and like to the botanics, that sort of area. I think that if you want to do that, if, if you kind of plan like half, half a day as a, you know, do, doing the Water of Leith walk, then uh, that's a really interesting kind of alternative angle uh, for Edinburgh. If you want to take some pictures that will not bore people with uh, <laughs> sort of um, hot steaks. Um, yeah, but like on its own, it's it's kind of strange. Like when you live here, you always think like, oh, so... It, it... It's just there. Like it's, it's a nice view from the Dean Bridge. And if you're yeah. walking to like the Modern Art Gallery, you can go via there and you can get in like a nice view for a moment. But it's, it's, it's just a place where people live, really. Yeah, but so. that, that, that's another good tip. Like as a like an alternative itinerary, go via Dean Village to one of the, the modern art galleries. There's two of them and they're both kind of above it. Um, a really nice walk. There's also a really nice cemetery there. Uh, watch uh, last year's Halloween video or two years ago. Anyway, we did a video about cemeteries and that one is mentioned. Okay, so yeah, that takes us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for your input on other people's opinions. 
which is a bit meta, um, come bring in even more opinions. We need more opinions. Uh, I hope you guys are getting cozy now that it's getting darker and wetter and colder. I am just um, sitting here with my endless mug of coffee, as always. Uh, yeah, if you're coming to Edinburgh anytime soon, I think that the trees are gonna start changing like now, like like tomorrow, uh, you can Any day now. you can already see like some some trees are starting to like shed, and it is September sixteenth today. Oh no, it's my best friend's birthday. Uh, and my brother's. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and we're sitting here shooting content for you. I hope you appreciate it, and this is super thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I will wrap this up now and go edit this video. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, and if you have any more hot takes, please leave them in the comment section. And if you want to react to other people's hot takes also, I just want to like, I want to see things getting unhinged down there. <laughs> this someone is gonna Get take this, someone's gonna take that <laughs> sentence out of context. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, don't forget, Instagram, kakibot, kakiblog. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can also always support me by buying something from my Etsy store. Link is gonna be in the doobly-doo. Um, together with all the other important links. Okay, thank you for watching and I shall see you soon. Bye.